But it doesn't mean that you need to continue to stay in a career path that doesn't make sense or that doesn't light you up inside. What is happening in your brain when you feel fear and anxiety during a career change? My name is Grace and I'm host of the Career Revisionist podcast and founder of Mastery Insights, where I help savvy professionals to create careers of significance and to expand that into living a life of fulfillment. One of the questions that I always ask my clients is one that explores their reasons why they believe that they haven't been able to move forward to achieve the things that they want in their career. And the most common response I get is that they are fearful, you know, they're scared. And the most common things that people fear when they are trying to move forward in their career path, when they are trying to get accelerate and grow their career, one of the most common fears is the fear of failure, right? And also the fear of losing a loss of income, the fear of taking risks, and the fear of the unknown, right? So unfamiliar territory, these are the most common fears. And when you think about it, our brains are very powerful calculating machines. Right? But it also, because of that, we are able, we are capable to think about what is the purpose that we want, what is the purpose of our life, and what is the purpose of why we do what we do. And as a result of having that capacity of our brains to be able to question its own existence, it also gives rise to certain biases. And it's these biases that give rise to fears and fears of the unknown and fears of the things that we're scared of when we move towards our career dreams. You see, your brain is an intelligent decision-making machine when it comes to deciding what the purpose of your life is and what you want the purpose and the goal of your career path to be. But at the same time, before we reach those logical centers, when we are making decisions, we are doing so from the logical executive centers of the brain. But before that can happen, we first address the emotional recess of the, recesses of the brain. We act based on emotions and it's these emotional parts of our brain that give rise to cognitive biases. So I'm going to talk to you about three cognitive biases that result in the fears and anxieties that we face when we're trying to move forward in our career path. The first cognitive bias that is associated with your fears to career change is something that I call the sunken cost fallacy. And what that means is that you fear that all the time, the money, the energy that you've invested into that, into your career path so far is going to go to waste. And it makes sense. I can understand how that could be a fear because it seems like, okay, I've, maybe you've worked 20 years to get to where you are right now. You've invested in a college education and you have done numerous um, uh, projects. You have, uh, you have negotiated, you have worked really hard in your organization and now if your heart is telling you that you want a career change, that you need a career change and that is what your soul is telling you, that is what it desires. And then you kind of feel like, well, all this time I spent in my education and now I'm going a different direction, well, it's all going to go to waste. Right, so that is understandable and, it's not, and it's, it's not your fault that you feel that way because it may seem that way, right? But it is a cognitive bias. The sunken cost fallacy is a cognitive bias. So if you find yourself continuing down a career path that doesn't feel right and you feel stuck there only because you feel like it would be a waste of your time and energy and your money to make a career change, then it's time for a reframe. Instead of looking at costs that cannot be recovered, look at what can be recovered. Remember, all of the things that you've invested in yourself, all the investments you made in your personal development, in your professional development, in your career path so far, can be recovered and translated into a different industry. Everything, and it's, it's an acknowledgement of all the achievements that you have that you have achieved of the person that you've become and none of and recognizing that none of those things the person that you are today would not have been able to be possible if you hadn't have invested that time and that energy right so rather than think of it as a cost that cannot be recovered look at what is being recovered look at what is going to be standing the test of time the truth is 
your time, money, and your energy that you've invested so far in your career path cannot be recovered because you've already invested it. But it doesn't mean that you need to continue to stay in a career path that doesn't make sense or that doesn't light you up inside, right? Knowing that you've invested this time, money, and energy in your career path so far doesn't mean that you need to be regretful of it. So find ways where you can reconcile and you can understand the reasons why you made that investment and make it worthwhile in the future. Find ways where how it can be worthwhile for a future investment that makes sense given the context of who you are and the person that you have become. Comment below, I want to hear from you. What fears do you have when you think about a career change or you think about the career path that you have ahead of you? And if you like what I had, if you like my content, give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Ring that bell so you receive notifications each time I upload a new video. The second cognitive bias that is associated with your fears related to career change is something called a confirmation bias. This is where you seek for, you interpret, and you recall information that just confirms your pre-existing beliefs, right? And it means that you tend to reject things that contradict your beliefs, right? And while this may be perceived as having confidence, what's really happening is that it's really an unconscious choice to see only what you believe and therefore to stay within your comfort zone. So let me give you an example. Many of the clients that I've worked with in the past, they have damaging beliefs about their career process, about their career progress. For example, they might believe that it's not, impos it's not possible to change careers once you are past the age of 50. And therefore, this is their confirmation bias. And so therefore, they would seek things and interpret things that would confirm their pre-existing beliefs. That is, that's harder to change careers once you're past 50. And when you seek something, you will find it. If that's what you believe and you are looking for affirmation, whether you know it or not, you are going to find it. So the danger of this confirmation bias, the danger of this cognitive bias, is that the beliefs of this nature, they're so strong that your brain is going to seek affirmation and then therefore you're going to be rewarded for being correct. And let me ask you something, is it better to be correct or is it better to make progress in your career? Right? So the way to get around this, the way to combat this cognitive bias of affirmation bias, the way to do that is to go out there and give yourself permission to prove yourself wrong. This takes courage, of course, because, it believe, because it's courage to admit that you're wrong. It's one thing to admit that you're wrong, and another thing to actually look out for evidence to prove yourself wrong. But this is what you need to do if you want to overcome this cognitive bias. You have to go out there and to look at what's true. What is true? Is that what you believe? Is that really true? Look for evidence to prove that it's not true. And when you find that evidence, ask yourself, what is true? What else could be true? Right? And when you begin this exercise, you know, don't forget to circle back and consider a new perspective on career change once you've examined the new information you found to prove yourself wrong. The third and final cognitive bias that is associated with your fears of having a career change is the belief that you are somebody with a job identity and that that identity defines you as a person. The thing, the thing is, conventional wisdom defines career stability as being in a one job, one job path for a long period of time. And maybe this is what you have been told by your parents or by your teachers or by institutions is that is the definition of career stability. When you've landed a job and you can stay in it for as long as possible. And what happens is when you've been told this over periods of time, when that is the measure of career stability in your mind, even though that's not what you truly value, but that is the value that has been given to you. And over time what happens is that you, your, your yearning, your career yearnings to achieve that that picture of career stability tends to be associated with who you are as an individual. The problem with that conventional wisdom is that career these days, modern day careers, are not long tunnels. They're not 20, 30, 40 year long tunnels. They're more like micro careers where they're constantly changing. You know, it's very hard to find someone these days in modern day career who has been staying with the same company for 10 years. It's not, it's not very common anymore. So when you associate career stability with that image that conventional wisdom has painted for you, what ends up happening is that your yearnings for a career change ends up being an existential disaster because it's associated with an identity of who who you are. The, the truth is that who you are as a person is not related to what you do. 
So in other words, what you do is your job is not your identity. You are not what you do. You are who you are, not what you do. The way to conquer this cognitive bias is to recognize that your career is not made up of these long, daunting, linear career paths and that you are who you are and that your identity is not tied to the job that you own or the job that you want to have. Right? And the way to do that is to recognize and to acknowledge that you can design your career path anything, any way that you want just by following your curiosity and by knowing the things that you value and by knowing what is important, what's truly important to you.